where we work. For now, as I said, we, our work is actually on the Cameroon Mountains. But as the years pass by, we are intending to expand it all over, um, all over Africa. So this, this is one of our pictures on Mount Rata. This is a seminar we had in uh, Mbembe, on the Mbembe Forest Reserve. This is when we we're just about leaving Munyange village into to one of our sample sites. You see how everybody, all the bags are ready for hiking. Then this is Dikume Balwe, this is Fungom, this is Michael um, um, discussing tea production with these people in Dikume Balwe. Michael and I, of course, in Dikume Balwe. Where do we collect? For now, we are interested on this stretch of mountain. We also do sampling around the lowland forest, but for now our main interest is on the Cameroon Mountains. Tropic main interest is now on the Cameroon Mountains. What do we produce? At the end of all, all this, if you don't put them in writing, then it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't save the world. It doesn't tell the world what we are doing. So we produce uh, newsletters. Um, 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 we produce floristic inventory reports. We describe new species like um, uh, December 2003. Two, we, we, I discovered two new species, that three new species, but two was published in, in December. So those are the type of things we also do. Because when you do a proper inventory, there are high chances of discovering new species. And it would be a shame if you discover a new species and you don't describe it, or you give it to somebody else to describe. So it's always good to learn how to describe new species. <clears throat> um, we, we are in the process of setting up um, a good database and we'll make, it, we'll make it open access. We hope Town and his team <laughs> will actually help us on that. We have been discussing things things on that. In the next few years, we will set up a good database on biodiversity of this area and we'll make it open access. I will also um, um, produce some catalogs and magazines. This is the type of ecological work we do. We do one hectare plot of 100 by 100. We do line transect of 20 by 500 meter, we study emergent species, understory species, and even have the forest floor. And all of this, in a few years, it will enable us to understand how this forest changes over, year, over the years. And now, it will also enable us to, to, to put in different data layers, to collect different data layers and tell people, okay, this is how the forest is changing. And at the end of it, this will help um, uh, decision makers of the country. This will help um, uh, politicians. And um, I, 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 I think that, that um, it, it will be a good idea to put all these things in place. OK. Somebody will ask. They will ask, why one hectare, 100 by 100? Why? Um, 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 20 by, 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 by 500. As you all, mostly botanists, may, botanists you know, you can set up your plot in square plots, circular plots, rectangular plots. It all depends on your objective. What is the objective of your particular research? So we actually base on that. Do you want to do it random? Do you want to do it in a square plot? Do you want to do it a uh, circular plot, every, ev every um, um, method has its own advantage and disadvantage. It now depends on you, the principal invest investigator, what you want to tell the, 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 the scientific world about the area that you are studying. Like if, you, if you see here, it's my measurer, he's trying to, he's trying to figure out his GPS and all of our plots, we make them permanent. So we give them unique tag numbers. So in every plot, 
every plot gets a unique tag number. For example, plot one may run from tag number one to 600. Plot two may run from tag number one to 400. Plot three may run from tag number one to 500. But generally, for people that, um, 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 for previous studies, <clears throat> for previous studies that people study one hectare and, um, and measure only trees from 10 centimeters above, statistics have shown that they usually record between 400 to 600 um, um, individual per hectare. But there are some, in, in lowland forests anyway, but there, there, there are some plots, like we have a plot in Corrup that we have 300 and, um, 397 seven individuals. There are also some plots that you have 650 individuals, but the range is 400 to, to 600 per, 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 per hectare individual per hectare, depending, uh, um, well, well, depending on, on, on the method you use, whether it's square plot or it's circular plot or it's rectangular plot, but that is the average individual per plot. And down here is just the forest that we work in. No good botany will work and don't go to the herbarium. If you work and you don't collect and identify your match your spacemen with different people's spacemen, I tell you the report you will write will not be the good one. So a good botanist must do inventory, you must collect spacemen, and you must match these spacemen with collected spacemen in the herbarium. <clears throat> so and, and that is that is that is exactly what Chopek is doing. For now, Chopek is uh, with made up of two botanists, and um, we don't have a herbarium as yet, and we don't intend to have because it's, it's very expensive keeping a herbarium. Nathan will testify. So most of our spacemen that we are documenting now will send duplicates to Limbe Botanic Garden and Yaoundé, and duplicates will go to Missouri and uh, Q. So, and at the, at the end of it, we will try to, to, to write books, um, 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 vegetation, um, um, floristic books of the area, <laughs> publish our work, and uh, also come up with few reports. What's our future plan? Tropic future plan we intend to be a leading institution in biodiversity study in West and Central Africa. We intend to create an open access database for biodiversity study that people can, you can get into our database, get information, publish it, but acknowledge us that this data is coming from this particular database. So we are, we are working, working with town and we'll see what, what we'll do in that, in that light. Also, we intend to train, to train um, 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 undergraduate and graduate students. The other day I was just discussing with Dr. Fokam in his office. I told him about Lovett, went to the field, and it's something we should actually put in place and continue because, because we, we both agree that, that, we, that we realize that there are many students at the university that really want to work, but they don't have the avenue to work. So it will be, it will be, it will be a good place if we can bring in a lot of graduate students, be it in zoology, be it in botany, and to get more um, biodiversity information. And also to collaborate internationally with uh, different institutions like BITC, and, um, and also to create more avenues like this. Tropec is, we are thinking that, that at least once a year, we should contact people to come up with a training like this that will host it in Cameroon. That is actually one of our objectives, that at least once a year, we have a training seminar like this. We invite people all over Africa, 
and invite some international um, instructors to come and give a lecture like this. Th that is actually one of our, um, of our main objectives. Thank you very much.